Hi guys, PJ here. Today we will be fitting a Nextbase dashboard camera into a 2017 Dacia Sandero. Now we're going to do this using the Nextbase fitting kit. These are available for all different brands of cameras and you can normally get them off eBay, Amazon, that type of place, some car shops, etc. And as you can see, uh, it's got a, everything in it that you need to get the camera fitted to your fuse box so the camera goes on and off with your ignition switch. In other words, no faffing around plugging it in your cigarette lighter. So, as long as you've got your fitting kit and you've got a memory card, because you are going to need a memory card for your camera, don't forget that one. A little micro SD card. Make sure it's the right speed, because if you've got a 4K camera, you're going to need a faster one. Right, in your fitting kit, you get a replacement power cable, which has got the mini USB there on the end of it. And on the other end, we have an earth, the black wire, and a power, the red wire. Okay. You will also get a little ferrous filter to put on the USB end of the cable. Now this is to stop interference with DAB radio and some of the bits and bobs in the car that could cause interference. So make sure you put this on. Very simple thing to fit. All you do is open it so it literally opens up. It's got little, little clips there, look. Can you see that? So you get your little clips, open it up. And your power cable basically runs straight through it, loop loops around the top of it and then back through it again so in effect you double it so it goes through it round it and through it again i'll show you when it's attached so you can uh, get an idea of what i'm on about with that one you also got two fuse spurs in this particular kit one for the the larger generally older vehicles there normal blade fuse and also mini blade which is much more common on newer cars there is also a couple of variations on mini blade, the little micro blade ones. So if you need one of those, make sure your kit supports it. The gap between the spades is much narrower. Um, and it looks like this. There you go. See how narrow that is compared to those? There you go. Not many cars use these, some of the new Japanese cars, etc. But you don't have to worry about it with your Dacia Sandero. You, you, you're more than likely going to be using this mini blade one here. So first things first, we're going to prepare the power cable and put the little chocolate chocolate filter chocolate box thing on it here that's what i call them anyway like i say it just pops open and it's on little hinges so we'll fit that so whilst we're preparing the cable with the filter get yourself three cable ties measure it across the roof yeah so wrap your cable tie around the cable gap it snip the end off there and finally what i always do is wrap a little bit of electrical tape around them okay so there's the end look with the filter cable like i said goes through round it and out again yeah leave enough cable here so that this can bend yeah because it's obviously going to be at an angle when it comes out the roof the reason i put these on is basically to secure the cable better in the headlining there's nothing worse than driving along and you hit a pothole because let's face it british roads not that great or any roads for that matter uh, and the cable comes dangling down in front of your view so all i do is beef the cable out i mean you don't have to use a cable tie you could probably use something else but a couple of cable ties on it Wrap them in tape because your, your headline is made of like a fibre material and I would imagine over time the little sharp edges on them where you've trim, trimmed them off might rub into it and make a mess. So just, just cover them over so they're not sharp. I mean that's not sharp now, that one that one is, yeah? And like I say, they're just gapped so that they run across the top of the headlining. I'll cover the other two with tape now and then start going round the side pillar and show you that. Right, so with the uh, uh, headlining that you're going to pull down, one of these is handy. This is a plastic leverage tool. It's made by a company called Bojo. You can use any plastic scraper. Don't use anything metal because you will damage the, uh, you know, the item that you're actually levering. These are available off Amazon and eBay and stuff. And all you're going to do with this is lever the top. So here's your wind screen, yeah? And there's your visor. So we're just going to pop it under and gently, and I do mean gently, pull down. Don't go at it, you know, like a, a bull in a china shop. You've just got to pull down on it enough to be able to pop the cable behind the headlining and for it to come out sort of here, yeah? And then we're going to run it all the way along till we get to this corner. Now, if you've got airbags in here, I do get the odd comment saying, oh, what about the airbags because of where the cable's going? Right, your cable's going to sit quite literally here, yeah? Just underneath it. It's not going to be right down here over the airbag. It's going to be sort of here, yeah? Now... The cabling is actually going to be higher than the sensor for the alarm cabling, so you've got nothing to worry about. There's no need to, you know, send me a little message saying, oh, my airbag, what about if I'm in an accident and it deploys? Okay, so we're coming along here. 
there we go. Just enough dangling down that we can sort of shove it back up if need be, all the way along, yeah, until we get to the corner. When you get to the corner, we're just gonna pop it under here. Again, your plastic leverage tool will help that. And then the side trim here, the rubber seal, if you just grip it quite firmly and wiggle it, it will actually come away. And then you're going to run your power cable. I don't know if you've got a good view on this. The lighting's a bit awkward today. It's actually throwing it down in rain. So we're going down here, all the way down to the location of your fuse box, which is under a little cubby panel just here. The cubby panel just pops off, so you get your plastic leverage tool under the bottom of it, and it will just pop off. Some can be stubborn, but you will get there. Fuses are all here, look. Right guys, now to the little bit more complicated bit, but no big deal. I uh, will just point out before we carry on though, if you've got you know any uncertainty about doing this, then please seek professional advice. Pay somebody to do the job, they are insured if they damage your car, yeah? With that in mind, I am not liable for any damage to your vehicle or injury to yourself by following this video guide. Okay, onwards. Now to do this bit, you're either gonna need a multimeter or one of those little screwdrivers that's got a bulb in it that lights up when you touch a circuit, okay? Either will do. I'm using uh, my rather prehistoric and battered multimeter here. Uh, we're basically gonna look for a 12 volt power supply that is ignition switched. So, you know, if you're using a multimeter, you'll earth your prong, your earth prong there, and go across the fuses with the ignition off, okay? looking for one that reads zero. Okay, now, this particular model, and I do see this particular model, I've tested quite a lot of them here, and the bottom ones are constantly live, but it will depend on year and spec of your vehicle to how your fuse layout, fuse box layout is. So you're gonna have to test, okay, to make sure. Now on this one, both of these center fuses here are accessory position fuses that go on and off with the ignition. So if we get our little test prong, yeah, or your little screwdriver that lights up, and touch the shiny bit on the end of the fuse there, and look, check your reading, we're at zero, yeah? If we put the ignition on, that goes to 12 and a half. I can't show you, because unfortunately I need three hands to be able to do that. It's, uh, it's a nightmare, I've been told the camera while doing these guides, but hey-ho. Um, so we're going to use this fuse here, this ignition switched one, which is an accessory circuit. Do not use anything for airbags or ABS or anything like that. It must be an accessory fuse. Check your user manual that came with the car for what fuse does what. So we're going with that one, the middle one, okay? And this is where you need your fuse spur, which is the mini blade one that I showed you earlier. There we go. Good look at that. Nope, sorry, I put the micro one on. There's a good mistake for you. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Mini blade, yeah? On. Fuse in there already runs your camera. And the socket at the side is where you put the fuse that you pull out of your fuse box. So it like doubles up the socket in the fuse box. Bullet connectors are already on them. You just push them together. And then get yourself either the tool that comes with the car, the little plastic thing. Or for myself, I always just use long nose pliers. Take the fuse out, pop this fuse in here, and then this goes back in the empty slot. Okay, now when you're putting your fuse spur in, make sure you remember to tuck it behind. Yeah, you don't want to go through this hole here because you'll overlap the dashboard. So behind and then in. That's that plugged in lock. Nice and clear. Earthwise for the earth cable, what I've done on this particular car, drilled a little hole there just so that the earth can tuck behind it, little washer on it, self-tapper, that's earthed it sufficiently. Tidy all this cabling up, you know, tidy it into a nice bundle, hide it out of the way, normally behind the dashboard here, and then luckily we get to go inside the car and test the camera, which is a good job, because the ovens have opened. So back inside the car, guys. Depending on the texture here, okay, so smooth glass, yeah? Very, very smooth. If you've got a black area and it's textured and you can feel it, you may well need to either avoid that area or use a 3M mount instead of a suction mount. This car is textured, so we'll be putting the, the, sat, the, sorry, the, sat nav, the uh, camera here on its suction mount, okay? This camera comes with your standard suction mount like so, so it will only stick to the smooth glass. 
a lot of the higher end cameras come with a separate mount, another one which is a 3M suction mount, uh, sorry, a 3M sticky mount, and that will stick to the black area near the mirror. So we're going to put this as near as possible and see if it powers up. It's so camera in position. You need it to be able to look sort of down so it comes out in a triangle, so it needs to see each corner of the bonnet, okay, so in, in case some clown comes across and clonks you at the front end. Now, as I say, it's on the sucker. I put it right up flush against the uh, the bobbly area here, and there's your power cable tucked away. So we're going to pop the ignition on now and see if it all works. And hey presto! Anybody would think I've done this before? A bit of power light there in the corner, and if you just wait for this screen to disappear, there we go. I don't know if you can see there, like I say, it's all fogging up, including my camera lens, unfortunately. A little power indicator showing that it's charging. It's got like a little zigzag power cable through it on the battery symbol there. So that's charging as it should do. If you've got it to that sort of position and you've hit all your wiring nicely, you've put your fuse box cover back on, well done. You've just fitted your own dashboard camera in your car. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Thanks a lot for watching and bye for now.